I'm Liam Ramalan, and in this video we're going to look at Ableton Live's key map mode. So key mapping is the ability to take the majority of the keys on your computer keyboard and map them to different areas of Ableton Live's environment. So this can be launching different scenes, so rows within session view that we've got here. It could be launching different individual ideas or clips. We can change parameters, we can turn things on and off, all sorts of things that can either work for live performance, setting up a jam environment in your own studio to explore new potential ideas from what you already have. And then also just a way of setting up a template environment that can be the preferred things you wanna turn on and off as you make music there every time you open up Ableton Live. So let's have a look at how we do um, key mapping itself. So we have three different ways to edit a key map. We have the key map button here. We also have the options, edit key map, and then we have command and K as a, another way to do it as well. So I'm gonna do command and K. And what we're presented with here is everything that's in the orangey red color can be assigned to a key. And as soon as we do that, on the left, we're going to see that assignment show up in our mapping browser. So let's go for the simplest performance oriented set of first. So I have all these different scenes, as I mentioned before, which are these rows. And we can launch clips individually and assign keys to individual clips here by clicking the play icon then pressing the appropriate key. But I want to go for the whole idea, the whole row. So I'm going to click the first row that I want to assign for this little mini performance then click the next row and press the key. You've got to put the focus on the area you want to assign first with the mouse and then press the key you want to assign it to. So once you're done with that, be careful to leave mapping mode, otherwise you actually are just going to accidentally assign keys to different places. And now one through five, launch different scenes. So it's quite simple in terms of how we do the mapping, but the, the nature of the mapping can be a bit more complex and get a bit more involved in how we change the sonics of what's going on. So if we, let's add a device to the uh, drum kit that I've got running here. It's a frequency shifter, which is gonna basically turn all the frequencies up in their value. Um, it's a good effect in terms of it being like a pitch effect, but it actually changes kind of the, the harmonic or harmonious nature of the frequencies and makes it a little bit more like clangy and metallic sounding. So it's quite a cool effect with drums. So it sounded like this before. I'm just going to tune it in to get another alternate sound out of this. Okay, I'm happy with that. It's like a, another kind of harmonic related pitch that's happening here. So I can assign a key to the activator button, which turns it on and off, or I can assign it to the dry and wet. Now, previously when I assigned the scenes, they just literally have a go value. They literally, they will be launched when the key is pressed. And the activator is gonna be the same. It's gonna turn on or off. Now, what I want to go for this time is a, a dry wet control because I can actually then modify how wet I want the signal to get and then how dry I want it to get as well, based on the two states of me pressing the key once and pressing the key another time as well. So let's go to key map mode, put the focus on the dry weight control, and let's go for a key that's separate from my scenes just to keep things clear for my, my head. And then I'll press I, and I've assigned the I key now to the dry weight control. So now we can see those minimum and maximum values to get a sense of of what we can control here. Now in this context, I actually just wanna leave it dry and wet. But if I did wanna, if I say I preferred the frequency shifter when it was 70% um, wet, I could set that to 70, either drag, or I could press 70, type that in there. Or when you drag it, you can also hold shift and, and get a higher resolution of control, which makes it easier to dial in exact um, figures there. So now that key is assigned, remember, take it out of map mode. And then now as I play my scenes, I have the I key, which can change the sonic properties of my drums. Now, if you remember, I was given an example of 70%. I actually wanted it to be 100% because it sounds the way I want it to 100% as the alternate version of this sound. So I'm gonna do Command and K and I'm actually just gonna pull that back up to 100%. But while we're at this, let's get something else into play. So in my percussion track, I've already got an overdrive here, which is adding a distortion um, and a presence to the sound. 
Um, now if I play around with this, I can find maybe two different positions that work well and then assign a key with a minimum value for one of the values and a maximum value for the other. And then that key can let me move between two different sonic states for this sound. So 10 kilohertz or 10,000 hertz is uh, good for the current position. Let's find out what other area sounds good. So around about the 300 mark. Okay, so 10,000 hertz, 300 hertz. So I'm gonna click on where I wanna assign, do the key map there, and then let's assign that to zero. And then we just discussed the 300 hertz, so I'm punching it in for accuracy, and 10,000 hertz is the right value for that two states of this sound. So if I take it out of key, midi map, key map mode, sorry, not midi map, key map mode now, I can move between uh, those two states with the O key now, and then I've got my drums which are going up and down in pitch. This is getting quite complex now. Okay, now if this was less of a live scenario, it was my home setup and I'm trying to jam with this, uh, we could record this into arrangement view. So we're in session view at the moment. If we move over to arrangement view, we could capture our ideas into here. Just make sure that the cursor is gonna start off at bar one beat one, just double click in the stop button there. And just make sure that automation is armed here as well. And then if we hit record, So you can see that's been recorded in there and then we can do our scene work as well and capture that in at the same time. So let's just overwrite what we did. of possibilities just from launching scenes and then uh, launching uh, different values for different devices as well. So um, the other thing just to make sure that you're aware of you're not too familiar with the Ableton Live environment is as I mentioned before we can do clips as well so if I wanted another option within my uh, sort of uh, performance or jamming environment I could also assign some keys to these clips here. So I'm just going for the first ones I see. Now in this case, you can come across a few problems with key map mode and it's worth mentioning this now, is we have our actual computer MIDI keyboard here. And this is basically, when this is on, this allows us to go to an instrument. Um, so we've got one here and it allows me to play it on the keys. Really useful for when you're traveling and you don't have any other gear with you. Um, but it will override key mapping. So if I turn that off now, you'll see that the keys I was just playing, you'll see that the keys I was just playing the instrument with are actually launching the clips now. So that mid, that um, computer MIDI keyboard mode there, that will override things. So watch out for that. Now what you can do as well is there's certain shortcut keys already built into Ableton Live. So M actually turns that um, computer MIDI keyboard on and off. Uh, B is your, your pencil tool. Um, if you don't want to lose that functionality by overwriting it, you actually get lowercase and uppercase uh, keys that you can assign. So technically, for all the actual um, inputting sort of letters and numbers keys that we've got here, you get two layers, because if you put caps lock on, then you can switch to the second layer, so the uppercase layer as well. So if you didn't want to lose that M key functionality of turning it on and off, and you wanted to, let's say, set up a send this time to the M key, you could do it by just treating all your assignments as capitalized assignments. So if I put into caps mode this time, we do Command and K and set M key to there. You'll notice it's capital M on there. And then now I still, when I've got a uh, lowercase mode on, I can still turn that keyboard mode on and off. And then if I put caps on, I'm allowed to turn the other thing on the spot. So there's 
of the thing on and off. So we've got those layers, um, which are it's really useful and it gives you obviously pretty much double the amount of assignments that are available there. So the last thing I want to discuss is how we can set this up as a sort of a production workhorse scenario where we want a template to open up in Ableton Live with our preferred keys. So uh, I, I mean, a go-to for me when I'm working with my own template is to have the mono key or the, the utility that's set to mono to basically be able to be turned on and off. Um, so one way of doing that would be, let's say we'd have it in caps mode. And if we just go to command and K, I'm actually just gonna get rid of that M key assignment I did as an example, because I don't really wanna control the auxiliary send there. Um, but I do wanna turn this utility on and off. I wanna be able to check my mix um, from time to time and make sure that it's mono compatible. So now as I'm working on my songs, I can switch between stereo and then folded stereo down to mono. Um, so other examples might be that you might have some mixing, or should we say some mix processing that you want to get a sense of what your songs will sound like once they're put into a mastering process, um, but you don't want to work into it all the time and rely on it making your sound. So you could, again, Command and K, assign that to a different key, and then that's now available whenever I need it to turn on and off. Okay, so um, that's how we can set up all the keys, but we haven't looked at how we can save the template. So let's quickly look at that. So if we go up to um, Live and then Preferences, if we go to File and Folder, at the very top of here, we have Save Current Set as Default. If I just literally click that, every time I go to New in Ableton Live, this environment will be saved. Um, one thing to watch out for with that is just make sure that if you are referring to other, in this case, files like uh, loops and so on, that those don't get removed from your um, your Scott computer environment as well. Generally, I don't start an Ableton Live um, uh, template with any actual musical content in there. It's more instruments, devices, and definitely things on my mix bus that I know I need to be able to produce and shape my sounds as I work. So we've looked at key map mode for live performance environments, also for jamming and capturing that into arrangement view, and then finally looked at how we can set it up for practical use for day-to-day -day production work and save it as a template.